Landmark Tutorial Center, you are welcome to another episode of our lecture on physics. Now, in our previous episode, we discussed about the topic that says equilibrium of rigid bodies. And we have seen that what? That the equilibrium of a body can be categorized into two. We have what we call static equilibrium and the one we call what? Dynamic world equilibrium. And we have explained the distinctions or the difference between static equilibrium and what? Dynamic equilibrium. Now, also, we also gave some conditions that for a body to be in equilibrium, that there is a basic condition that must be what? Satisfied. And those basic conditions we are giving in our previous eh, episode. But let me take a recap of those eh, conditions for equilibrium. The first condition we gave is that what? Is that the sum of all the forces for a body to be in equilibrium, then the sum of all the forces acting on that body must cancel each other. So if it happens that you have a body that is acted upon by horizontal forces and vertical forces, let's say for instance I have a body of mass M which is acted upon by two horizontal forces F1 and F2 and two vertical forces I have F3 and we have what? And we have F4. We are now saying that for this body, because there are horizontal forces, F1 and F2, they are acting what horizontally on this mass, and then F3 and F4 are acting what vertically on this uh, mass. So for this body, acted upon by horizontal forces and vertical forces to be in equilibrium, then the horizontal forces, F1 and F2, must cancel them set. What this then means is that the sum, the sum, the sum of all the horizontal forces acting on that mass must be equal to what? Zero. And in the same vein, the vertical forces, F4 and F3, must equally cancel themselves. And what this thing simply means is that the sum of all the vertical forces acting on that end, on this mass, must be equal to zero. For this body to be in equilibrium. That was what we discussed in that previous episode. And let me remind you that some questions we have solved, some examples we have solved on that particular word, uh, this particular topic. So in this episode, we wish to solve more and more questions that relate to this topic of bodies being in equilibrium. So if you have your textbook or your material with you, you can open to uh, exercise 9, which is in page 134, question number 1. That is a simple exercise. So we'll start from the simple ones, and then before we now proceed to the difficult uh, ones. All right. Let's take the first question and see what the question is asking us. The question says, question 1, exercise 1, a book a book of mass 2 kg is placed is placed on a table is placed on a table full stop the normal reaction the normal reaction produced the normal reaction produced by the table is dash. The normal reaction produced by the table is a dash. That means that we are required to fill in the what will be the answer in that uh, box. And the options they gave us here is option A is 30 Newton, option B is 20 Newton, option C is 15 Newton, and option D is what? 2 Newtons. So we want to find out what, because the question is asking us to calculate the normal reaction that we produce by the table. Let me even ask a question. Normal reaction, the normal reaction produced by the table, is it a vertical force or a horizontal force? To answer that question, we have to produce the diagram of the book and the table. So as we have the tabletop, this is the top of the table, Okay, this is the top of the word table. And a book, a book is placed, 
let me just draw it anyhow but you know how what a book is so as you will have a book this is just like a, a book okay the book is placed on this uh, table all right and this book have mass what is the mass the mass of the book is a uh, 2 kg all right now once this book is placed on this uh, table and this book have a mass if this is this book have a mass this book will experience a downwards vertical force which is called the weight of the what of the book so the book will experience what a downwards vertical uh, force okay which is equal to the weight of the book and therefore this downwards vertical force which is equal to the weight of the book is now equals to m g we know what weight is now weight is always equal to the mass times the what gravitational acceleration and of course since the mass is given and the value of g is given we can find the what the weight but due to the action of this uh, downwards force the 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 top of the table or the surface of the table we produce a force so as to react to the effect of this downwards force i repeat the surface of the table will produce a force an upwards force to react to the effect of this uh, downwards vertical uh, force and that reaction produced by the surface of the table is what we call the reaction word force the what the reaction force so our reaction force will always act uh, upwards since the weight is acting uh, downwards so it is this reaction force that we want to find please remember the question says that this book of mass this is placed it was just placed there was no movement it remained at rest as it was there so since this book is at rest or this book was in a state of equilibrium then we have to show that what that the conditions using the conditions of equilibrium that the forces acting on this mass must cancel themselves now we look at this diagram here how many forces can you observe that is acting on this mass two forces two vertical forces number one is the what the reaction force number two is the what is the weight and these two forces are acting in opposite what direction but what we are saying is that for the equilibrium to be achieved by this body for this body to be in equilibrium then what happened the forces acting on this body must cancel their cell so therefore for equilibrium for vertical equilibrium for vertical uh, equilibrium the forces r must be equal to the weight w and this simply means that the reaction r must be equal to the weight is given as what mg and this therefore means that the reaction force because to the mass is given as 2 kg and then the our gravitational acceleration since it was not given we make use of our g as what as 10 this is now times 10. so therefore the reaction force is simply equals to 20 watt newton 20 watt newton so we are done with that exercise as simple as abc so this is how questions that uh, we may be asked would uh, look like so it just some of these questions just require us to use the condition so what we used there was the condition for what for equilibrium the condition for equilibrium helped us to calculate the what the normal reaction that will be produced by the surface of the table the normal reaction produced by the what so all right so we are still on the same problems we still have to solve more questions that relates to bodies in equilibrium and how to use the conditions for equilibrium to solve some basic problems in physics so now we have another question that is gotten from the same uh, material the university of physics exercise uh, six exercise number six now this body is uh, it, it, the question actually is describing a body that is what that is resting on a smooth inclined plane now let us read the question and see what the question is demanding from us the question says that a body of mass 5 kg rests on a smooth inclined plane at an angle of what 30 degrees to the what horizontal it now says 
what are the magnitude of the force P applied along the plane which keeps it from what? From sliding down. And the normal reaction produced between the plane and the rod and the body. The normal reaction produced between the plane and the body. Now, we are going to give the force diagram, force a diagram. That is a diagram that shows the forces that acts on this uh, body resting on the incline, both in magnitude and in what? And in direction. So we're going to show the forces, their sizes, and their what? And their direction. So now, going by the question we have, we are, it was mentioned about what? An inclined plane was mentioned. So I think we have an inclined plane. This is our inclined plane. Okay? You know, these are normally angle of 90 degrees, of course. Now, now this inclined plane, on this inclined plane, we have a body. A body, this is the body. And the body has mass. What is the mass of the body? The mass of the body is what? The mass of the body was given as 5 kg. What again are we giving? This body rests on this plane. A body of mass 5 kg rests on a smooth inclined plane at an angle of what? Of 30 degrees to so the horizontal. So what it means is that the in this is an inclined plane of what? Whose angle of inclination is what? Is simply equals 30 what degrees. Now please remember that from this problem we are told that this object resting on this inclined plane has a mass. It has what? A mass. Because this object has a mass, any object that has a mass must experience a vertical downwards eh, force. Every object with a mass must experience what? A vertical downwards eh, force, which is due to what? Gravity. Because the, this is the vicinity of the earth. This is the surrounding of the world of the earth. So therefore, for this mass to be found within this uh, surrounding, this mass must experience what? A vertical downwards uh, force. And this vertical downwards force is because of what? Because of the force of what? Gravity. But we are saying that the vertical downwards force experienced by this mass is actually equivalent or equal to the what? The weight of this mass. The weight of this uh, mass. So this body will experience a particular downwards force due to the what? Due to the weight. This is the weight, W. Which is equals to what? Mg. Please watch my diagram. The way I drew my diagram is very simple. Now, this is the vertical. This is the vertical axis. This is my vertical axis or the y axis. This is the vertical axis. This is a straight line. Okay, so if I say that the weight acts vertically downwards, that means that this line and this line should be parallel. So I'm just the kind of reproducing this line here. All right, very good. Now, now you observe something. Now, in order to resolve this force, we first and foremost have to produce our axis. Normally, in problems involving inclined plane, we normally use the the direction or along the plane. We use what the axis along the plane to represent our what x axis. So I'm going to use this axis, this axis along the plane. I'll use the axis along the plane as my x eh, axis. So this would be my x axis. X axis. So where do you think we we'll now represent our y axis? Because remember, please, your x axis and your y axis must be what? Perpendicular. They must intersect at angle of what? 90 degrees. So if I'm taking this line as my x axis, my y axis should be a line that would make an angle of uh, 90 degrees with the what? With the, with the x axis. So, as me this is a line. Sorry, please. Sorry, this uh, Okay, please. This is what? This is... Let me produce this diagram in a proper way. So please, now watch, this is the body, it experiences what? A particle downwards force. It experiences a particle downwards eh, force, which is equals the weight, given as what? As mg. 
Okay. So now from this, I have taken the x axis, this line as my x axis, the line along the plane of my x axis. So our y axis should be a line that is perpendicular. A line that is what? Perpendicular to this uh, x axis. So we can draw our we can draw our perpendicular line to be this. To be this. Okay? You can see this line is actually perpendicular. I think it is perpendicular. It's perpendicular this angle of 90 degrees. So this is this can be taken as my what? As my y axis. This can be taken as our y what? Y axis. Okay, that is our y axis. Now we want to see what happens. We want to see what happens in this case. We want to see all the forces that acted on this uh, mass, which made it to be at a rest or in a state of equilibrium. Now, first and foremost, you observe something. Number one, this is our x axis. This is your x axis as we have taken it. This is our x axis. Okay, this is our x axis. And this axis now is your what? Y what? Our y axis. Your y axis. So now, can't you see that the weight, this weight, this force here, which you call the weight or gravity, is acting in this uh, plane. This is not a plane. Because this plane now is made up of the x axis now and the what? And the y what? And the y axis. So, of course, in our previous classes, we have said that. Whenever you have a force that is acting in a plane, whenever you have a force acting in what in a plane, such a force can be resolved horizontally and what and vertically. Such a force can be what resolved horizontally and what and vertically. Now the question we ask ourselves is how can we resolve the weights? How can we resolve this eh, weight vertically and there? Eh? How can we resolve this weight vertically and what horizontally? Very simple. Observe something. If this angle here is 30 degrees, I want you to also agree with me that this angle here will also be type 30 degrees. I have to draw this diagram very well. Let me see something. All right, this is just like this. This is how to produce this. Okay? By the green line. So if this angle here is 30, this angle here should equally be what? 30 what? Degrees. You agree with this? Can we verify this? Yes, it can be verified. Because if we look at this, you observe something that if this angle here is 30 degrees, this angle here, this angle will be 60 degrees. Because when you look at this big, big triangle here, this is a big right angle triangle. So here is 90. Here is 30. Therefore, here should be 60. Because the sum of the angles in the triangle must be equal to what? 180 degrees. So if here is 90, so these two must give us what? 90. And since here is 30, the remaining should be what? Should be 60. That is how we produce this. But for this particular angle here, how can we show that this angle here is what? Is uh, 30 degrees. Now watch. As mean, I don't know what this angle should be. I mean, I don't know what this angle should there be. Now, remember that I said that this line, this line, and this line, they are what? Parallel. Because this line is just like, this line was produced from this line. If you, if you drag this line towards this place, it will intersect with this. All right? So therefore, if that's the case now, that means that if this bigger triangle here is right angled, this tri small, small triangle here should also be a right angle there. Triangle. So if this angle here is 30 and here is 90, this angle here should be what? Should be 60 degrees. This angle should be what? 60 what? Degrees. And if this angle here is 60 degrees, please watch again. You observe that what can happen here is the x axis and this is our y axis. And the x axis and y axis always intersect or makes angle of 90 degrees. So it means that this angle here from here to here is what 90 what is 90 degrees. If this angle here, if this whole angle is 90 degrees, and this one now is 60, that means the remaining one should be what should be 30. Because the whole 90 minus our 60 will give us 30 what degrees. 
So that is how we produce distance. So if this angle here is 30, the angle here should be what? 30. If this angle here is theta, the angle here should be what? Should be theta. All right. Now having known all these things now, we have also seen in our previous episode that since this force, our weight, is acting in this plane, is acting in this uh, plane, any force that acts in a plane can be resolved horizontally and what? Vertically. Any force acting in a plane can be what? Resolved what? Horizontally and what? And vertically. That means that this force must have a horizontal component and a vertical what? Component. Now, the horizontal component of this force is equal to mg sine theta. mg sine what? Theta. Why the vertical component of this force, when resolved, will give us mg cos what? Cos theta. Go back to your chapter 4 of this material on problems involving forces acting on the body lying on an inclined plane. You will see that when you resolve the weight, the weight, Horizontally, what you get is mg sine theta, and when you resolve it vertically, what you get is what? mg cos what? Cos theta. So now, I am going to give a nectar diagram of these uh, forces that is acting on this uh, body. I will reproduce my diagram. So this is my inclined plane. It is inclined at angle of what? 30 degrees. And this is the body. All right? This is our body. The mass, having mass, 5 kg. Now, of course, the body must have a weight and the weight must act vertically downwards. Our mg acts downwards like this. And we are taking the line along the what? The incline. The axis along the incline as our x axis. So if we are taking the axis along the incline as your x axis, that simply means that what? That means that the y axis will be perpendicular to the what? To the x axis. Okay? And when this weight is now being resolved horizontally, what we will get is the horizontal component of the weight given as mg sine theta, and then the vertical component of the weight given as mg cos cos theta. All right? Then, having done all this, having done all this, Remember again that the surface of the incline will produce a force to counter to counter the effect of the what of the weight, which we call the what the reaction force. Are you following? Yes. Now, because as the weight is acting vertically downwards, all right, the surface of the incline will equally produce a force to react to the effect, the downwards uh, effect of the weight. And that uh, force is called the what? The reaction word force. Then what again? From the question there, it was, say, it was said that what? That a body of mass, 5 kg, rests on a smooth inclined plane at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. What are the magnitude of the force P applied along the what? Along the plane which keeps it from what? From sliding. So, of course, from this diagram here, if I want to prevent, because this body here is experiencing a horizontal force, which is the what? Which is the horizontal component of uh, the weight, given as mg sine theta, trying to pull this object downwards. To stop this body from rolling down, some force must be applied in the opposite direction to what? To stop it from what? From a uh, sliding. So I mean I applied I applied the force. I applied a force and a no force. Let's say P was applied. So as to, to prevent this body from what? From sliding. Due to the what? Due to the the horizontal uh, component of uh, gravity acting on this uh, mass. What should not be the magnitude of this uh, force? And what should be the value of the reaction produced by the uh, surface of the world, of the incline. That is what this question is demanding from us. Now, what do we do? It's very simple. I have to clean this diagram, this illustration diagram. Now, we already know that from this diagram given here, 
there are about four forces, four forces acting on this uh, mass. What and what are the forces? One, we have the force P acting horizontally. We have the what? Horizontal component of gravity, given as mg sine theta, acting horizontally. We have the what? The normal reaction acting vertically, and we have the what? Vertical component of gravity, or the vertical crop, or the vertical component of the weight, acting what? Vertically downwards. So all these forces acts on this uh, body. But for this body to be at rest, for it to remain at rest, that's what it is. for it not to slide down, the body should be in what? In equilibrium. That is, the forces acting on this body should be in equilibrium. And for these forces to be in equilibrium, it simply means that all the horizontal forces, all the what? Horizontal forces acting on the body must cancel themselves. And all the vertical forces acting on the body must equally what? Cancel themselves. Please remember our theta here is 30 degrees. So if we are resolving our angle here, theta should be 30 degrees. So therefore, this angle we are using here is 30 watt degrees. And here is still 30 watt degrees. So therefore, we now say solution that for what? For this body to not to slide, for the body not to slide, for vertical, sorry, for horizontal equilibrium, for horizontal what? Equilibrium. For horizontal equilibrium, these two forces should be able to cancel each other. That is, what we are saying is that uh, P should be equal to mg sine what? Sine 30 degrees. Which means that our P, the force applied to prevent it from sliding, should be equal to our M is given. What is the mass? M means the mass, which is 5 times the value of G, gravitational acceleration. When you are solving questions in physics and the value of G is not given, we always advise to take our g as what? As 10. So we shall use our g here as 10. Then times sine what? Sine 30 what degrees. And this now means that our p will now be equal to 50. Sine 30 will give us what? Half. And therefore, our p should simply be equal to what? 25 newton. That is the value of p. In the same vein, we can find it because the next question now says, we should also find the what? The normal reaction. Can we find the what? Normal reaction? Yes. The normal reaction here is acting vertically. And for this body to be in equilibrium, the forces acting vertically must cancel themselves. So therefore, what it means is that our R should be equal to our mg cos what? That is what? Degrees. And that solves the matter. But that are just to show the working here. And we have to clean up this. Let's show the working. Now, for, for vertical equilibrium, for vertical what? Equilibrium. For vertical equilibrium, our R should be equal to our mg cos, cos 30 what? Degrees. And this simply means our R should be equal to 5 times 10 times cos 30 is what? Cos 30 is normally 3 over 2. And uh, this now means our R should be equal to, by cancelling this and this, what you get is uh, 25 root what? Root 3 in Newton. And that is the actual answer to this uh, problem. So it's as simple as uh, that. So we have been able to solve this problem, which requires us to calculate the what? The amount of force that should be applied on this uh, body in order to prevent it from what? From sliding. And secondly, the normal reaction that should be produced by this uh, surface of the inclined, in the, the, yeah, the surface of the world of the inclined. So we would uh, run it up here. In the next episode, we shall then look at uh, what we call, uh, we look at other problems, look at other problems that involve uh, more calculations in this uh, area. And then we will now delve into what we call uh, moment of uh, force, how to calculate some issues or problems involving moments of uh, forces. Thank you for watching this episode. We promise to give you more and more as we proceed in this. Thank you.